Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 11, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so this is my review, as I just said, and this episode was pretty good overall. I definitely enjoyed it more so than the last two episodes, and I guess this is mainly down to Mixie and the focus being on the actual story rather than like a kind of theme that they've been going for in these last two episodes. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this without further ado. So Mixie stood against Nixley over 500 years ago. This is revealed in the opening scene where Mixie has been called by Supergirl and it turns out that they both know each other and they have a long history and Nixley actually was imprisoned in the Phantom Zone because of Mixie who stood up and testified because he was like a blood relation to someone else in the past and so there's a reason that Nixley is back and she wants to get Mixie and we'll get into that a bit later in the video. But so in this episode they explain a lot of the lore, there's the king who was wicked called King Birkins and at this point this is where Mixie sings and you're like okay it's a kind of fun way to get into the backstory and it not be just pure exposition obviously they're singing exposition and it's not very good but it's quite funny and I think that's the whole point because like the whole of Team Supergirl you can see their reactions and like even Supergirl you could probably see on the screen right now she has this reaction where she's like, what the hell is going on? And they basically just cut him off. So I think it's a self-knowing nod. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of viewers are going to be annoyed because people don't like when Supergirl breaks out into singing just randomly, which it does ever so often. And normally it's pretty cool. This was not very good, but I think that was intentional. It was supposed to be quite funny and very awkward with Mixie's rendition of I'm a Survivor. And so let's move on to the next thing, so Nia returns and she has had a dream and she sees Mixie in a cage and so it's a, you know, future sort of dream of like what is about to happen. And this is where Mixie reveals the Allstone, which is power over life and power over death and magic. This is the powers that the Allstone gives a person, especially a fifth dimensional person like Nixley. And so she is apparently after them and she's after the totems and that is going to be our story as we go into the next couple of episodes. I don't know how long this is going to go on for, but she is going to be going after these totems and to create a new Allstone. And that is why she is after Mixie and she basically needs him because he is a blood relative of the person who originally created the Allstone. And so Nixley wants to have Mixie so she can get that ultimate power and Team Supergo is determined to protect Mixie who is more of a menace in the past. He's not really ever been a villain. However, we actually get some acknowledgements to the past in this episode in regards to him. Like, Alex brings up Monel, which was great just to hear his name. Obviously, we know he's coming back later this season. But she talks about Monel and how he used an amulet to get back against Mixie and banish him. And apparently was destroyed, but Mixie reveals that he actually hid it. So he goes after that. But it's kind of nice to see then that they're actually acknowledging that what happened with Monel and Kara in that season 2 episode with Mixie is actually canon, despite the recasting. Let's move on from here, let's go over to Lena's story. So she's in a place called Newfoundland, which is DC's version of Ireland essentially, because, you know, Lena is from Ireland and that's their accents. In the place that she visits, so she visits this town where her mom came from and she's trying to find out more information about her. That's why she's been absent over these last two episodes. And so she's there, she talks to Andrea. Andrea does some digging of her own, which leads Lena to find out where one of her mom's friends is. And so she basically gets a very bad reaction every time that she mentions her mom's name. I think she should have got it the first time because her mum is called a dirty witch and I quote. So it's pretty obvious from the start that the whole town is against her and really doesn't like her mum. But she keeps on going around and asking and mentioning her name and being like, I'm the daughter of this witch. And they're obviously not going to take very nicely to that. And so Lena is going to get powers. This is pretty much what you can sum up from this episode. Lena's not going to meet her mum, her mum's dead, 
but she's going to inherit something from her mum, and as it's referenced by Lena's mum's friend, I don't know her specific name, I forgot it, but she talks about how Lena has this spark inside of her that her mum did, and we know she's going to be using some magical powers later in the season, so it seems like she's going to be able to tap into those powers, which is obviously going to be a big change for Lena, because she is a non-powered person normally on the show, but now she's going to get magical powers, so... I guess that's going to be pretty good when fighting off against Nixley when she regains her powers. Okay, let's move on. So we have the return of Mitch. Somehow he breaks out of prison. He's back. It's a little bit repetitive. I'm a bit confused about what they're doing with Mitch. But by the end of the episode, you get it revealed that Nixley and Mitch are going to work together because it's going to be beneficial for both of them. And so if we move on from this, we have Mixie going around and he's pretty useless. Alex and Jean don't need any help. Jean says an imp without magic is like a rocket ship without fuel, which kind of was a burn considering that he heard it. It's pretty mean. Same goes for Neo and Brainy when he tries to go and help them fix the DEO cuffs in order to dampen her powers, obviously Nixie's powers, and so he's a bit useless again, but then it's his idea later in the episode that kind of leads them towards nearly being able to stop Nixley, so he does have some worth in the end. And so Lena hears about her mum and how she was a bad person, and how she killed someone's mum, and obviously that was the person in the bar, it was her mum. And so she's hearing things that goes against her idea of her mum. Obviously she died really young, like when Lena was really young, I mean. So she doesn't remember much, but she just remembers her as like a kind, loving person, but obviously there is a darker side to her character that Lena has never found out, but she's finding about now. So back in National City, we have a giant cat who is summoned by Nixley. And so Nia brings the cat into the dream world, or so she tries, but then she stopped and Team Supergo is able to stop the cat. And it's like a pretty decent scene. I don't know, some of the outdoor scenes in this episode were shot very weirdly. They were very overexposed in the sky. It was a bit distracting, just a lot of white. However, they are able to stop this giant cat, which is a little bit funny. It's kind of like Bebo, I guess. But this is at the point where Nixie shows up and she bargains for Mixie as she sets a meet time in this park that they were fighting at. And so they're going to go get Mixie and she comes back. But at this point, she strangles Supergirl with her magic. Also, this is where when they come back to this park, you see the Kryptonian dragon. And the dragon is literally just like flying around and threatening them, but obviously it's just a creation out of her magic, so it doesn't do much damage, although it could have done, it's just like kind of flying around aimlessly. And so back in the tower, we have Mixie using his smarts for once, as he reveals two versions of himself by using a Luther Corp copy machine. But it doesn't work properly, although it's a very good idea that leads them to a next step, which is better because there's something about his powers interfering with the actual device. And so Nia reveals to Kara that she was the one that let Nixley free, and she feels really bad about it. And this is brought on by Supergirl blaming herself. So there's a nice reconciliation between the two characters there. And it's good to see that Supergirl forgives her despite Nia making this big mistake. Okay, so back over with Lena. We have Lena who finds her mother's witch friend. And she explains her mother and the friends and them all being witches and being part of a coven, how they use powers. And so this is explained through the use of a montage, which is graded all sepia and it looks like it's a flashback, obviously. And it's strange because they have the other actors playing their parents, so like Katie McGrath is playing her mum. Obviously, it's literally impossible for her to look exactly the same, so it's not very believable. However, I get the idea behind it, but I think they should have chosen another actor. So this montage is weird, it has some very shaky footage, and it's just very random, and obviously it does reveal lots of stuff in regards to her magical powers and what they did in the past with killing this guy. But obviously this is a big moment of revelation for Lena because she realizes Oh, my mum wasn't a normal mum, she actually was something greater, she had powers, she was able to tap into magic, and maybe I have that with inside of me, 
and that's 100% tease. So I'm looking forward to seeing Lena with powers and figuring out how to use those powers is going to be definitely interesting. But back over to normal Team Supergirl, we have Nia who's using Brainy's image inducer to become Mixie and she goes and confronts Nixley in the park where they have set the meet and so she summons this dragon that I just mentioned before and so there is lots of talking between Team Supergirl and Nixley and they're trying to bargain for Nixley to stop. Obviously Supergirl believes there is something still good inside of her and she can reach out to that but in the end it doesn't work and it's a whole lot of talking like it feels a bit anticlimactic like there's not really a fight. Everything pretty much pauses as Supergirl tries to get through to Nixley and it doesn't seem like Nixley is very ambitious or like trying to actually take them down. She's just taking her time but I guess she is pretty tricksy so it kind of makes sense but at the same time I don't know if it flowed very well as a scene and it's at this point when she reveals like no I'm not gonna change I really want to get Mixie I want to get this totem I want to create the all stone again and so Supergirl goes as far as to use the phantom zone projector she is an inch away from using it however Mixie sacrifices himself and stops Supergirl from using it. Obviously it would have heavily affected Supergirl because she wouldn't want to use the Phantom Zone Projector again due to her past experiences of being shot by it and it shows how far she is willing to go that she was willing to totally just pick it up, use it, but luckily for her Mixie sacrifices himself and so he goes inside wherever he was supposed to go and basically Nixley has control of him now and so this is when Team Sugo is like, we're gonna go get him, and it seems like Mixie's going to return. However, it was confirmed in an interview that came out after the episode that Thomas Lennon isn't going to be returning as Mixie, although this episode literally set up them trying to save him, so I'm very confused why they wouldn't finish it off, because his story is incomplete, and... He literally just went inside there, sacrificed himself, but Team Supergo isn't going to try and save him. Is he dead? Could it be a possibility? I guess that is maybe true. But it's weird that they confirmed no more Mixie, even though it definitely seemed like they set up something like that. But yeah, so that's pretty much how the episode ends, and then we get Lee and Mitch come into an agreement, and so it turns out that Nixley doesn't have her powers anymore, but her crystal is still powerful, and she's going to have to find a way to get her powers back. And with both storylines going on in this episode, with Lena finding out that she maybe has magic with Insider and she can use it, plus the magic storyline with Nixley and Mixie, it seems like they're going to collide at one point very soon, and potentially Lena is going to be the one to stop Nixley, because she is the Team Supergirl member who can use magical powers, or so it seems. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video and you enjoyed the episode, leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel if you do that. Also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any videos if you're not subscribed already. And click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later for my next video, and goodbye.